So in short, this video will focus on making a um, wrapping like this in a few very simple steps. I get asked quite a lot about my handles on my axis uh, because they all have a very specific uh, configuration of sorts. Uh, and now I'm going to go over what I'm using because I, I get this question every time I show one of my axes. I will get a question about what I'm wrapping and the power cord and how I attach it, etc. So with every new axe that I get, regardless of maker, uh, this video here is, um, uh, is going to be a standalone video, but it's also going to be part of my complete Phoenix family video. So all of these three axes are made by Phoenix, but I use these on uh, all my axes, regardless of uh, maker. So first off, you don't have to put anything on the axe handles, really. Uh, it's just you know something that has become a, a routine or tradition of mine. Uh, the one thing some people might need, I might need it too from you know not very often, but from time to time, is an overstrike protection of some sort. That can be like a leather wrapping. Uh, sometimes there is a built-in uh, metal overstrike protection, uh, but I usually go with. Uh, three millimeter thick paracord uh, and there are tons of different types of paracord but I go with three millimeters because I find it to be the most suitable ones with smaller hatches uh, I can sometimes go with uh, two millimeter thickness but this time I'm going three millimeters for for all of them and before I attach the paracord itself I usually go with some uh, really thin but very durable and tough and strong uh, CCM cloth tape. This is very, very sturdy, very tough. I mean, some people will probably say that it's just regular hockey tape. And I guess that in a sense it is, uh, it is hockey tape, but uh, CCM cloth tape is, uh, is the name of this specific one. So. For all you guys that, that wonder and that's usually asking me, this is what I am using in regards of the tape. And this is just you know one type of, of paracord, there are many different types, but three millimeter thickness, I guess that's one of the more important aspects to it. So I usually start with putting uh, some cloth tape here. I then go with the paracord over the cloth, cloth tape and then I also wrap uh, the handles themselves in, in cloth tape. And the reason for that is, I mean, I usually, 95% of the time when I use my axes, I will be wearing gloves. Uh, and that's, that's a fact. But uh, there is, of course, some sense to uh, to not doing this, you know, cloth tape thing. I mean, you're still going to have a good grip here, no doubt. And when striking, it is sometimes, you know, a good thing to have some, um, what can I say, some sliding moment, movement of sorts. Uh, then again, you still have you still have a bit of that with uh, with the wrapping of this CCM tape. Uh, there might be a day when I remove all the all the tapes and all the paracord and everything on all of my axes, clean them up, um, oil them a bit as well. Uh, that is something you should do um, on a semi-regular basis, or well, not. Not very often, but I mean, it, it all depends on, on the usage, uh, how much you use them, how you store them, the conditions you are using them in, etc. But regardless, I am going to put this stuff on my axis and I will be showing how I do it. Uh, I mean, 
the the paracord in particular there is not that much uh, you know technique or anything in putting on uh, the, the CCM tape but I I might throw that as well starting small let's make it easy for us we're gonna go with uh, with a Starina long version hawk and put some um, some cloth tape to begin with uh, since we have this um, lanyard of sorts here uh, I would probably not put or maybe I will actually remove this one you know what I'm actually I'm gonna remove this um, this lanyard thing here we can still use it even if I put cloth tape I mean we can put cloth tape over the the lanyard hole and then just uh, uh, slice it open uh, through the cloth tape so that is one way to uh, one way to do it so we will save this leather lanyard so when I put on the cloth tape here we will sometimes have uh, different uh, forms to uh, adapt uh, to I mean you see this the contouring here of the the head compared to let's say this uh, contour or this contour and uh, I recommend uh, keeping the sheath on when working with the paracord and uh, the cloth tape and, and everything like that to avoid unnecessary injuries so and there's usually I mean I'm gonna put the paracord on well probably starting from here I think um, I mean let's say on a bearded axe like this this will uh, to begin with this part is going to be tricky uh, putting paracord on and there's actually there is no need to have any overstrike protection up here uh, I mean since this axe is bearded the protection will be, uh, be needed you know on a, on a lower part here but I'm gonna go with from from the like the neck part here and down it's a, it's a good starting starting area but over to the to the Starina here so let's start by seeing if we can find a nice spot sort of it does not have to be fully perfect here Just you know, getting those those tricky areas uh, to begin with. It's taking slightly bit more. Semi tricky from time to time. Slowly but surely, we will be getting there. So now we have one side fixed. The other one, we still have one part that needs to be uh, be fixed. There we 
Cool. Want to keep it as even as possible. Which can actually be seal me, seal me tricky to be honest. Then again, we can remember that. This um, this part will not actually be visible since there will be a paracord over it, but you still want to have it as close and without any you know bubbles or anything. You want it to be evenly uh, distributed, so to say. I mean, you're not likely to do that much over striking with, with this one. So, I mean, I, I would say that this is, uh, uh, this is probably more than, more than enough in terms of uh, area to be covered here with this. And then we can just even it out a bit here. Like that. So now we have the foundation. It is pretty even. I'm not sure how well it can be seen. It is kind of dark in here, I realize, but. Uh, but it's evenly distributed. Yeah, that will work quite well. Let's see if we can get the entire axe here in in the video. So next we can do um, could do the bottom part of the handle with the tape. I realize now there's not going to be a lot of a lot of wood showing here under all all of the all of the tape here, which is kind of boring in a sense. I mean, I like the look of wood, but uh, it is what it is. Maybe we should actually go with the um, with the handle before we do the um, the paracord. I think. Now I decided to do the, the cloth tape over the, the, par, uh, the lanyard hole, but that is not going to be an issue. We're going to have the lanyard hole still. It's gonna be fully, uh, fully usable, so to say. So let's start by uh, doing like that. Actually, we're gonna take that here. Then we can focus on uh, getting it aligned the way we want it to. Like I said, there's not going to be a lot of wood showing at all once we're done, sadly. Uh, 
that I think this is going to be quite sufficient since this is such a small and kind of light uh, lightweight hatchet. So here is the um, the wrapping once it's uh, once it's done. Then we're gonna slice up the, the lanyard hole if we really want to use it. I. I don't, you know, I don't use lanyards that much when I use my my axes or hatches. I, I've got to say that, but uh, regardless, we can still open it up and and see how it how it looks. But now it is time for uh, for this uh, time for paracord. Interestingly, the paracord is actually, in my opinion. Uh, the easiest part of it all uh, This is I'm gonna have it like this right now. This is the, um, uh, the The front side or the the emblem the makers mark, you know, the, like the front side of the axe and I will want to Use the back Side of it instead. I'm gonna see what is the best angle to put it, but I'm, I want to use the the back side um, and what you do is that, let's see, I need to, uh, I, I'm not sure I need that much paracord here because it's not a thick handle and it's not a long handle, but uh, it is, it is what it is. So, um, put it like over there. I start by taking some, um, some measures. Uh, this doesn't have to be that long, really, to be honest. Uh, I want the overstrike protection to end just slightly before uh, the end of the cloth tape. This would be uh, that would be good. So I take I have one. The, I mean the entire power cord string here, and I have this part end part like like this and I put it like that okay you will keep it like that I place my thumb there to just keep everything in place um, and then oops sorry got out again so then I take the long long the entire power cord here and I put it over the short one and I'm saying and then I go you know full circle here like I stated before uh, I don't really have to start up here uh, I mean I could because there's just actually you know what we can actually start up there uh, it doesn't matter because it's it's such a small almost non noticeable uh, contouring here so we can actually start we can start higher up, doesn't matter. But that means that we will have to uh, once again look here. So we have this small part down there. Then we place the thumb here. And then I go around like that. Let's see, I mean, it's, you can actually. I'm, I'm gonna let it go like this, right under the. The heather is going to be slightly um, not not entirely straight, but that that is not an issue in in any way. We will see how this works out. I mean, I I was thinking of starting at a lower point, but uh, like I said, it doesn't really. Uh, Matter. I'm gonna adjust this just a tad bit. Not that I really have to, but just because. 
So we just continue to uh, to wrap around here. Or the same way we started. There's no really not really any need to hold your thumb there anymore. It's gonna stay in place by itself. Um, you can do this semi-tight. I mean some people say oh, you don't you can't do it too tight, you won't be able to do the final part, but as, as you can see here, um, I'm actually I'm actually doing it quite quite tight uh, from the get-go. Uh, it will work fine regardless. Just make sure uh, to check on the on the front side that it's uh, that uh, the strings are not overlapping each other in any way. That it's you know that it's smooth, so to say. Let me just continue. It's not uh, not really the most exciting work one can do with an axe, but once it's done. It is done and it will stay that way until you yourself decide that you want to remove it. Then it's easy um, with the right tools at least, otherwise it's not that easy. So now we're getting somewhere, checking the other side. Is it looking good? Yeah, it's looking fairly, fairly well. I mean, this is this is actually quite a bit excessive. Uh, if you're if you're gonna overstrike down, you know, down to this part, then maybe you should uh, perhaps buy a cheaper axe and do some uh, some practice swings. Um, so now we're getting to the final, uh, the very final part, as you can see here. So we're gonna see. We would like to have about 50% of this this total length we want to have saved here and uh, maybe a bit more so it's gonna be like yeah, something like that I believe would be sufficient. So let's do like that. Then we take this part and Put it inside a small. Uh, come on. That was kind of smallish. <laughs> yeah, it's not always easy. Here we go. Make sure it is. It looks good here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And then we're gonna go with this one. You know, to make it easier, give me one second here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something here. One second. I'll be right back. So we're gonna. I'm just gonna do it like this. I'm gonna go with this one over here, like that. I have this one is tight. About fifty percent. Yes. Then we. Start pulling this one. See if we can get it. Good. It is pretty tight, but it's not really a bad thing. There we go. Let me take this little thing here. So now we have a really, really tight 
paracord over strike protection going on here. This won't budge or mow and it will provide really good shock resistance uh, for the axe. And the reason why I decided to do this on the back side is because uh, you might get you know, small gaps like that. And I prefer to have the front side looking the absolute best. Usually I would have liked it to be like less um, less tape shown here, so I might remove it. So we just got a bit of tape showing there, not that much. But it's, I mean, it doesn't really matter to be honest. So here we have a completed uh, Pink G10 version Phoenix. CCM cloth tape for better grip, overstrike protection in form of paracord over a layer of CCM cloth tape. And that is um, how, I, how I do it. And once again, I'm not telling people to do this because it is not, you know, really super necessarily. It's just, you know, it's gonna end up with, you know, being personal preferences and you know someone's or somebody's uh, routine or tradition or whatnot. Uh, you can of course open up uh, the lanyard hole here by using a small sharp knife and cutting in the cloth tape and then you can also attach um, a lanyard of sorts should you want to do that. Uh, me personally like I stated I, I rarely use uh, lanyards for my axes or hatches but there are a lot of people who do so once again it's gonna be uh, personal preferences now I'm gonna do the other two axes but I think I won't show me doing them on camera I think this is probably enough uh, I mean it's the exact same uh, principles doing it so uh, exact same routine more or less so I'm moving on to one of the bigger axes now as you can see uh, totally the same same procedure of sorts. I'm gonna put a paracord on here. But this is what I meant that you know do be careful when working with knives with super sharp uh, I mean axes with super sharp edges. Uh, do some wrapping. I mean if it's if it's going to be tight, like a tight spot here, like I showed with this one that I have yet to do. You can see that it's gonna be super tricky uh, working on this, so you're gonna have to unsheath it. But when you do be sure to put something on so you won't cut your hand like that. Um, just a FYI. So I'm gonna continue wrapping this one up now as well. So I have now put on the paracord like this. Tight fit as well. Uh, the handle thing is fixed as well. And we have the, the sheath on. So, ready to be put to good use. So it's the final axe I'm working on right now. Got the top tape on. Gonna take this, this part now and then we're gonna do some uh, paracord wrapping. Slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. Last one to get rest. Just need to put some uh, some paracord on there for the overstrike, and then we are ready to uh, to get to work. So the last axe is finally finished. <laughs> 